Uh, right. So first I'll explain uh, what a sketchbook is for. Um, essentially your sketchbook is you showing how you can create an idea, how you can start off with a theme, for example. The theme for this sketchbook was freedom. You start off with that theme and then you uh, develop it, you narrow it down, you think of a deeper meaning, you do refinements, you do artist researches, until the very end when you have your final piece idea. And then, then of course you have to refine it and make it perfect. So this sketchbook is you proving that you're good at art to your examiner uh, rather than them just judging you on one piece. So this first page is the mind map that you have to do in every book. Uh, here you're basically taking the idea of freedom or whatever your theme is and narrowing it down to different things that can be related to that. Something I like uh, about this page is that I have put little, little things behind some of the ideas uh, to just explain what those ideas could be and show that I've, I've explored them and then decided against them or decided for them. I've also shown that I can take lots of photos and do a little artist research. Here I've put um, a photo of Shepard Fairey's work and a tiny, tiny little artist research about it, basically explaining how uh, his work could be related to the theme of freedom. Uh, so right off the bat, the examiner knows I'm good at f photography, I'm good at art, I'm good at ideas, and I'm good at um, artist research. So, so this next page, uh, we are asked to develop our idea even more um, and to say specifically what that idea is. Um, so here I have written a very brief synopsis of what my meaning is. And I've gone over to explain that even more using fancy words like liberation and... Uh, paintings. <laughs> I've also written why I've chosen this theme um, and ways I could represent it. This is like a key part of the page. So on the next page I have taken two, I've actually taken these two pages from uh, my first sketchbook. So when, when you're doing your first sketchbook, which is at the beginning of your 10, um, you don't have to use that sketchbook. The examiner never has to see it. Uh, it's essentially a practice for when you do your actual sketchbook um, and it's really useful uh, but your school might be taking you on trips to the Tate or the Saatchi in which case um, you can keep those pages and then tear them out once you finish that sketchbook to put in your coursework sketchbook which is more important and um, will get you free marks basically it's really cool so what happened when we went to these um, galleries is we went round, we looked at paintings and then at the end of the day we selected one painting or two paintings from each and then spoke about how they could relate to our theme and the aspects of the painting that we could use in our own paintings and that counts as uh, a type of research. And here we have uh, the first artist research. Um, here I've researched Steve Hanks, as I said I would on the second page. But essentially you're ticking off a whole load of boxes every single time you do an artist research, you're just ticking boxes. Um, and then at the end, you say what you learnt from researching this artist, how you will incorporate um, one of their techniques or one of their styles into your own work, or how you will experiment with using it again. So on this page I have done a transcription of Steve Hank's work as I said I would do. I try not to spend too much time on each of my pieces. You have to find a balance between quantity and quality um, and it should be pretty equal. Uh, so I've done a, quite a small uh, transcription, smaller than you would usually do. As usual at the end of this uh, annotation I've said what I would do to improve next time, what I liked about this painting, what I learned from doing it and what I'm going to do next. So it says photos in the style of Steve Hanks. I did six photos, went out with my friend uh, and then I annotated the quality of them selecting one photo that I would then use in a tonal drawing and a witso. A witso is the work in the style of um, whatever artist you're focusing on. So, as promised on the next page, I have done another artist research, this time on Lee Price, who I mentioned at the beginning of the sketchbook. So from doing this artist research, I've decided that I will continue to uh, convey the theme of freedom using a solitary subject, so a single person in every single uh, one of my paintings or all my artist research from here on. So I've made a decision as a result of this, and the examiner will go, tick, well done. On the next page, 
I have again done photos in the style of Lee Price this time and then did a tonal drawing of it. And this page is refinements of the tonal drawing that I just did. Uh, when you're doing refinements, a handy tip uh, is to use the same drawing and photograph it at, at each, each stage as you're improving it. Then you don't have to start again from the beginning and it will take like a quarter of as long as usual. Uh, and here I've done another Witso, a work in the style of Lee Price, uh, an oil painting of this image. And here is my third artist research on Elizabeth Lenny. Uh, so here I have done a media test. This is one of my first tests in order to recreate um, one of my artists work you can do this with every one and it'll get you extra marks but I've only done it with my third artist um, in order to create a Witso I used four different medias to figure out what media I would use in my um, transcription of that painting I knew I knew it was going to be oil paint I knew uh, wait yeah I knew it was going to be oil paint I knew that was the right one to use um, but by doing this you're telling the examiner that you can do it, that's that's all you have to do. Uh, so here I've done that transcription uh, and said what I learned from it. Uh, so here I've taken photos again, done a witso. And here I've done a third tonal drawing. And uh, this is a page that I actually stuck in at the end, as you can see it's sort of kind of flimsy. Uh, it's an extra piece of research other than artist researches. You don't exclusively have to do an artist research in order to get a mark for doing research. And on the other side I've done a fourth, fifth, fourth, I don't know, so many, another artist research and a little mini uh, transcription of their work. Um, that will get you an extra tick uh, if you do it for everyone as well as a big transcription. This time I didn't do a transcription for his work which is why I did this little thing here and I filled some extra space where I couldn't be bothered to write by um, uh, cropping off bits of the original of this and then describing what's going on and, and whether I will use that technique in my final piece. I will research David Hockney's style of painting water as well as doing some experiments of my own so that I can apply this style to my final image. My final image will incorporate a figure in a swimming pool. That's what I've decided from recording this and that's what I've done in the next page. So this is a very important page because this is what your final piece will be of. Uh, you, of course you can edit it later on but this is the basis of it. And on the other side, because I've done it in oil paint I had to stick a whole load of stupid paper over it so it wouldn't destroy itself, which it did anyway because I'm an idiot. Uh, so I've done three basic ideas of what I want my final piece to look like. Uh, you need to create as much variation between um, your ideas as possible so your examiner knows uh, what you're doing so you could make the water red, you could uh, completely change the composition, you could use different colours, you could use different mediums, which is what I did here, medias. Um, you could uh, cut it up and jumble it around, make it a collage, whatever you want. Because uh, you only have to have one good idea. The other two could be terrible, uh, but they have to be created skillfully, otherwise you don't get as many marks. Uh, and as promised, I did a David Hockney um, artist research with another tiny little uh, mini transcription and then at the end of this I've decided that I'm going to paint my water in the same style as Hockney did. Uh, and here uh, is the beginning of all the tests that you have to do uh, to develop your final piece idea. On this water test I uh, developed, I sort of tried out a whole load of different styles of painting water-like sort of shapes and on this side I tried four, out four different medias and you have to make it obvious which one you've chosen. To make it obvious, I put a little arrow here and a big arrow here to say that I chose oil paint and this is the style that I want to do it again. So when you're doing oil, don't do oil. Uh, it's, a great, it's a great medium, it's super fun to paint with but it takes forever to dry. Um, so in your first sketchbook I would recommend just using like watercolour or um, photography or whatever. Something that's easy and fast. Uh, and then next I've done a double spread composition experiment and again background experiment same thing trying out different backgrounds and as well uh, to show that I had done some research to do this experiment I did a tiny tiny little artist research on Edward Hopper's Nighthawks 
I don't know why, why did I do that? Just like Hopper, I will paint no exit in this background to test out the effect it has on the meaning. That's what I did in this page, as you can see by the arrow. Uh, and I decided not to stay with that idea, but it probably got me an extra tick to do that little artist research. This is a page um, to help explain the process of an idea more clearly to an examiner, but really it has no artistic value. Um, and then every so often, once you've, well, as you're doing uh, experiments and refinements, you need to include a, this is what it looks like so far, so the examiner uh, can see you doing big paintings. Uh, and here is the statement of intent. Essentially, the statement of intent is you going, this is what I've done so far and what I plan to do in the future, uh, as well as sort of reminding the examiner of what your theme is, what your deeper meaning is, um, and uh, saying what you think you did well and what you think you did badly, and how you will improve that in the future. You also have to say how you uh, will create your final piece in the exam. Uh, I've said at the bottom, when I create my final piece in my 10 hour exam, I'll start by painting the area outside the pool to reduce the chance of smudging. Essentially it's sort of like a, um, a risk assessment of doing your final piece, make sure you will do it uh, uh, in the time that you have, which is five hours one day, five hours the second day. Next, I've done a refinement. Here it says hair refinement with an arrow telling you it's this one. And here I've done shape refinements, refining the shape of the pool. Uh, this was a bad page to do because it actually made my uh, painting worse. Should have just stuck with that. Oh well, I fixed it later on. These refinements are showing that you can improve your piece and shows that you can uh, create something of good quality. And here I've refined the bowl, as you can clearly see here, and then I've written as you go through your sketchbook, uh, the backgrounds will start getting worse and worse. You'll notice at the beginning, um, my backgrounds are quite good. I did like a pretty painting in the background, and here I've done a gradient of orange to white and just a blue page. Pretty awful, but really backgrounds aren't the most important thing. Don't worry about repeating a background, uh, uh, but do worry that a background might clutter up the entire piece and make it look a lot worse. More refinements as well as a page reminding the examiner what your deeper meaning is. Uh, here I focused on the individual sections of my final piece, uh, describing how they add to the final piece's deeper meaning. Another tonal, another refinement, another refinement, another refinement, and done. And then I just gave up, I think. My coursework sketchbook. I don't know if I'm going to divide uh, the coursework and the exam book into two videos. I probably will, otherwise it'll be a pretty long video. Um, so click something to see the exam sketchbook I did. And I think I'm going to show you the terrible year 10 sketchbook that I did. That'd be quite funny. Maybe. Who knows? I've had a day. <laughs> uh, Alright. Bye!